everybody, I'm Tom Bass, so welcome to Look Back, where I take a look at reviews that I did last year, five years ago, and ten years ago, and I tell you what I think about these games today, if I think about them much at all, um, and then if anything's changed or not. So here we go, we're going to start with a year ago. A bunch of uh, kids games a year ago, we have Bug Hunt, which I gave a 6 to, it's fine for kids, this is from Simon. you're reaching in, trying to find things, in, like trying to grab little bugs, but it is a huge game for you know, it, I mean, it's a big box and all that for it not being a really big game overall. So you need to keep that in mind. Simon Sorry, mixing Simon and Sorry together. I thought this would be worse with Hasbro's mix ups uh, and mess ups and everything, but eh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. So we'll give it a six out of 10. Uh, then we have Hungry Hugo. This is a silly little game for kids where there's this Hugo ape running around. you got to play cards to move them to the right spot at the right time. Very, very little kids, but also a 6 out of 10. Power Rangers deck building game. This is not a kid's game, but still only getting a 6. It's fine. It is one of the many different deck building games that Cryptozoic is doing. The best being the new G.I. Joe one. This one, where you're transforming your Power, into their, your Power Ranger into their... Power Ranger form, we're back in the human. It's a little fiddly. It's a little lucky sometimes. I just wasn't overly impressed with it. Didn't dislike it, it's fine at best. Coffee Traders, Oof. This is a big giant game um, from Capstone. It is a little heavier than I'm normally comfortable with playing with a Euro style game, but there's a lot of interesting facts in it. It has a little stock market. It has a area control. You're trying to control these plantations and grow coffee and then complete orders. There's a lot going on in it. Beautiful production, fun, but it's not going to be for everybody. Seven out of 10. Maharaja. This one I would have given a uh, higher score to if the production was better. I probably would have maybe even given it 8.5. I really liked the game. They did change the rules from the previous one. I like the original rules better where it was more of a race. This one's victory points. But still, the concept is interesting. We have a wheel. You're picking actions. You're picking a roll. That roll combined with your actions combined with moving on roads a neat combo it's too bad it got messed with those things i can only give it a seven clue the museum caper i took a look at a year ago even though this is a quite an older game this is not clue it has the theme of clue but it is essentially a one versus all like scotland yard style game where one person's running around grabbing paintings and everyone else is trying to catch that person cool production fun little game seven out of ten Imperium Classics, or Legendary, Imperium is a deck building game, and this is another fairly heavy, obtuse game. It is the most difficult deck building game I've played. I give it a 7.5. It's very well done, very historical, but there's a lot of rules. It's going to be hard to keep track of other players. You're playing things. There's a, a little bit of take that. It's kind of like a war game that's morphed into a deck building game. Very neat, good art. Um, check it out. 60 Second Cities. This one, just like Imperium Classics, gets a 7.5. Although they're very, very different games. This is a two-player cooperative game in which you're building a city using little dominoes trying to accomplish goals. Wooden pieces, it doesn't look like it should be as fun as it is, but it is a lot of fun. Ankh. This one I gave an 8 to. I like the trilogy from Eric Lang slash Simon. Um, with Rising Sun and Blood Rage. Ankh is clearly my least favorite of the three, although again, eight isn't a bad rating. I like it a lot, but I want to be clear, my favorite way of playing this is with two players. It has a little bit of a chess match feel to it. With three or more players, the merge rule comes into place, which I'll give it credit. It's unique and different than many games, and I don't like it at all. So I don't, with three players, this would be a five or a six for me. But with two players, it's an eight. So there you go. Uh, then Chronicles of Dronagore. This is another eight. This is a big dungeon crawl where there's a spread of darkness, has a really neat Euro mechanism with all these special abilities. Interesting um, way to play. As with many of these games, the storyline is okay at best, but just the progression and the very different characters make this one a lot of fun. So Clover, this one, fantastic game from Repo's production, and it's barely a game. I mean, it's more of an activity. You're playing together as you're trying to put these squares on and guess the combos. It's like Password, but cooperative and fun. So Clover, 8.5. 
and Kemet Blood and Sand. The original Kemet is one of my favorite games. This newly revised one is more the same. There's a few things I wish they did. I wish they made a nicer looking board and all that, but I'm still giving it a 10 because the game is that much fun. Technologically, monsters on a map. All right, five years ago, I took a look at Destroy BCN, some terrible game about giant monsters attacking Canada, or whatever, it's just not very good, three out of 10. Solaris, this is a game from Queen Games, and this is one of the games that made me realize not everything Queen put out was gold. This was a pretty dreck filled game. I did not like it at all, three out of 10. Fiery Dragons, a little kid's game, lots of fun for kids, but small kids, six out of 10. Fast Food Fear, this is a cooperative speed game as you're fulfilling orders with zombies, a forgettable theme, unfortunately, but it's okay, six out of 10. Leaders of Euphoria, Choose a Better Oppressor, terrible name. This was a crossover between Euphoria, um, one of Stonemaier's games, and Good Cop, Bad Cop. In fact, it's the same game as Good Cop, Bad Cop. Has some cool guns. Good Cop, Bad Cop's not a bad deduction game. Better games are kind of being rolled out, and this one's so big, no one ever plays it. The theme doesn't mean anything. So I liked it. I gave it a 7, but I'm dropping it to a 6 because I haven't got it to the table since, and I'd rather play newer games, I think. Uh, Quingo, this is a roll and write bingo style game. This one is 6.5. It's cool, but you're just calling out numbers and then you roll a die and it tells you what column to place them in. That's fine. Mountains of Madness, this is a 7 out of 10. I could have put this on our list last week of games that are liars because it looks very Cthulhu, the Mountains of Madness. And what it is, a silly party game where you have to do a bunch of mad things like I, everything I say has to be in rhyme or whatever without telling anyone what they are and without messing up. Sticky Chameleons, another 7 out of 10. This is where I'm hitting cards with a sticky chameleon. It's this long extended tail and you, th you throw it at the table and catch cards. It's really stupid, but it's fun. 7 out of 10. I think they just remade it with Cthulhu theme because why not? Really Bad Art, this is another 7 out of 10. Got one of these party games where drawing bad art can be a good thing. And that's good because I'm terrible at it. Splendor Cities of Splendor. This one's a 7 out of 10, and this one's interesting. It came out five years ago, and you know what? I completely forgot about it. I see people playing Splendor all the time. I never see this expansion in play. That's very intriguing to me. Um, there was one part of it, I think the, the actual Cities of Splendor part, that I didn't care for, but the other modules in it I thought were fun, and I would play them, but I haven't in a long time. Uh, Caverna Cave vs. Cave. 7.5, this is the two-player version of Caverna. It does not hold a candle, the Caverna. You have to take that out of the equation. But if just as played on its own, a little two-player game, I think I like it. I don't know if I like it better than the Agricola, all creatures great and small two-player game, but it still works well, 7.5. Outlive. This is an 8 out of 10. This is a post-apocalyptic game in which um, you are just basically getting your clan and placing workers. And it has a very in-your-face style thing. A lot of fun art. Very good production. I like it. Outlive. And then um, Bitter Up. This one I'm giving an 8.5. And you know what? No one else ever wants to play this with me. I don't care. It's super fun. Bitter Up is an auction game based on um, your bluffing card game. And you are doing a lot of bluffing auctions in this game. And I find it to be silly fun. Um, I just wish more people played this and liked it. I'm not even sure if it has a American production, but fun game. Ten years ago. All right, Aeroplanes. This is from Mark Wallace, Mayfair. He did a trilogy, automobiles, ships, and aeroplanes. This one definitely is the least remembered of those. I didn't care too much for it. Five out of ten. Dominant Species, the card game. This one here, I really dislike to the point where nowadays I would say a four rather than a five. Um, I love Dominant Species. I think it's a great game. This card game did nothing. It made it worse. It was random. Not very good. Fill the Barn, very almost mass marketing style game. You're collecting cards, filling a barn. Meh, five out of ten. The Big Fat Tomato Games, kind of a little take that game. Meh, 5.5. Chupacabra Survive the Night. This is a game where you roll dice and you're trying to catch the Chupacabra. It works well with kids and families. Incidentally, this review is in my mind because Z Garcia, this was the first review he ever showed up in, although not the way you might expect. Awkward Family Photos, a party game based on the idea of Awkward Family Photos. It's exactly what you think it is. Six out of ten. I wish there was more thought put into the actual game itself. Double Take, this is another 6 out of 10. This is a charade style game from R&R. &R. 
and that's fine, but there's so many shredded games out there, this one doesn't stand out, 6 out of 10. Formula Motor Racing. Now, this thing came out 10 years ago, probably came out 20 years ago. This one I'm raising from 6.5 to a 7 because this one has stood the test of time. It's just a bunch of cars, and you play cards, and you switch where these cars go in this thing. And at the end of the game, you want your car to be in the front. That's it. Lots of fun, and it just works really well on a simple level. Legacy Gears of Time. This is one of the few time travel games that works, barely works, but works as you're moving around in history, trying to invent various things. And if you invent something, you can't, if you haven't invented something in the past, you can't invent something now in the present. Some interesting ideas. This one has kind of disappeared off the, the place, but the, the company who made it is doing really well. But I just don't see many people talking about it. But it might be worth checking out Legacy Gears of Time. Hera and Zeus, I gave this one a 7, although realized that the redone version of it, Thunder and Lightning, I would give a 9 to. Hera and Zeus, though, one of the two-player games from the Cosmos line. Fantastic, back and forth. It's basically Stratego with cards. Call to Glory, this one I gave a 7.5 to. Uh, Call to Glory is a reworking, a samurai reworking of a game called Drive. It recently has been remade as a game called Little with a Y Wood. Um, it's a fun game. Uh, I, it, I think it re works really well. It's a two-player game from Reiner Knizia. I enjoy it. Um, the Samurai theme no means nothing. 7.5. And finally, Thebes. Now, Thebes, I gave it 8.2. And I think when I first played it 15 years ago or whatever, I gave it 8.5. I still really like the game, though. And I still give it an 8, where you're going out on your archae archaeological digs, pulling from a bag to get different tiles. And as more and more tiles pull from the bag, they become less and less, there's less and less good stuff in there. And you have to use your time wisely as you play this game, uh, because the more time you spend on the time track, um, the, the better you'll have digging in the archaeological dig, but you also get fewer turns over the course of the game. A lot of fun. Anyway, those are the games that I reviewed a year, five years, and ten years ago. Thanks so much for watching. Look back here on the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.